Here we go. Welcome to another episode of the Diary of an Apartment Investor podcast. I'm your host, Brian Briscoe. So today I'm going to tell you the one thing that matters most in determining which market or metro area you should focus on for acquisitions. Now, this is a very complicated subject, and there's probably a million different methods in determining where you should choose to invest. Now, I've heard dozens of different metrics that you should look at before deciding. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to boil it down to the one that is absolutely positively the most important. So things that I've seen before, net in migration, birth rate, economic growth, economic diversity, historical unemployment rates, crime rates, cap rates, supply versus demand, competition from other operators, infrastructure, landlord-friendly states, population size, 1% rule, cash on cash returns. I mean, those were just the ones that I thought of in the first two minutes, all right? This list is never ending. And if you, just, if you do an internet search on, you know, what's the most important thing when determining a market in which to invest, you're going to get a bunch of other stuff hit the head to headlines too. So these are all important to some degree. I'm not saying that they're not. I mean, yes, you want to invest in a metro with solid demographics, with population growth, with in-migration. Yes, you want to invest in a metro with a robust and diverse economy. And you can really say yes to everything on that list. Yes, 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 yes. They're all important. But the problem here, once again, is there's so many different things to choose from. And there's not a single metro that perfectly aligns with every single one of these rate uh, metrics. So what do you do? Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to boil it down, like I said, to the one single most important thing when determining which metro to invest in. Here it is. Are you ready? It's how well you know the area. That's it. More than anything else, the most important thing is how well you know the area, okay? And the corollary or, or the kind of like the, the 1A on this one is how well can you get to know the area, okay? For argument's sake, let's look at investing in your own backyard, okay? Why that's such a popular thing and why it's, it's the first thing that I suggest to everybody. You are going to know the dynamics on your block better than anybody else in the industry, you are going to understand what's happening in your neighborhood better than anybody else that's on the outside looking in, okay? So you're going to be able to understand the dynamics and take advantage of those dynamics better than anybody else. Now, like I said, the next important, most important thing, kind of like the 1A, is how quickly can you get to know that area? There are going to be areas where you have more access to information than others, all right? And if you have ease of access, this is going to make things a lot easier for you. For example, are there cities where you can join the local chamber of commerce, where you can attend city council meetings, where you can join the Rotary Club or get involved in the local community in other ways where an outsider simply cannot? Now, part of whether or how fast you can get to know an area has to do with the frequency you can make it there. And that's related also to the proximity. So when you're making your list of cities, look at the cities or metros that you know well or travel to frequently or have a reason to travel to frequently, all right? So for example, what cities have you lived in and gotten to know well, all right? Which ones do you travel to often, like I mentioned, and which ones can you travel to quickly, all right? Now, here's my personal example. When I first decided to invest in apartments, it was 2018, and I had just moved to Washington, D.C., all right? And I really did not know that metro well at all. Now, looking at all of the major metros in the U.S. and specifically focusing on the East Coast, I decided that my markets were going to be Columbia and Greenville, South Carolina. Now, what was the deciding factor? Now, these, these two metros didn't have the strongest economies, but the numbers were good. They didn't have amazing population growth, but it was growing and at a fairly good clip. All right, it wasn't the most landlord-friendly state in the world, but it was definitely heavily weighted towards landlords, you know? And you can go down each one of these individual areas and you could say, okay, it's not the best, but it's decent. So why did I choose to focus in the state of South Carolina? Well, simple. My wife was born and raised in Columbia, South Carolina. Now, 
since we had been married, and right now we're, we're 25 going on 26 years, but we visit her family on numerous occasions and vacation frequently in the state, in Myrtle Beach or Charleston or in Columbia itself. Now, not only did I know that area well and travel there frequently, I also had a lot of resources at my disposal to continue to learn more and more deeply. If I didn't have direct access to a resource, I knew somebody that did. Okay, somebody that did have access and could get, get me access to those resources. Now, what was the end result? Within two, two and a half years, I had closed on nine properties in that area, and those nine properties ended up making me a millionaire. So to help you right now select the best market to work in, just for now, ignore all those metrics. Okay, ignore what everyone else is telling you. All right, start by making a list of the cities that you know well, and then prioritize the ones where you also have the ability to get involved. All right. Now, once you have that list, go ahead and you know pick your favorite metrics to make sure that city that you, you're looking at doesn't completely suck. But in the end, you're going to make more money for yourself and for your investors by gaining a knowledge of the city that you're going to be investing in. And that's going to help you to find the absolute best deals possible and things that other people might potentially overlook. Now, as we're finishing up with this episode, I just want to point out that the market selection is just one of the many different things that you're going to need to do just to start out in this business. Now, what has helped me most to grow my business over the last several years and my other businesses, I do have several now, is to have somebody with experience there to guide me through the many complexities that each individual business has, all right? And I strongly recommend that you have somebody in your corner to do the same. Now, if that is something that you're looking for, let's talk about it, all right? Click the link at the top of the show notes or go to thetribeoftitans.info slash coaching to learn how I can help you get to the next level. And that's it for today. And until next time, don't wait to buy real estate. Buy real estate and wait.